Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I've got a lot of stuff planned but I've also hit a few snags. Uh, first of all, I noticed that uh, the Class C asteroid contract to bring it into orbit around Mimus is gone. And the reason for that I know is because I didn't include fine print in the, in the install. And that was probably a fine print contract. I didn't include it in the install because fine print was built into 0 0.90. As you can see, we've got similar contracts here. Uh, but apparently the, the version of fine print that was built into 0 0.90 is not compatible with the contract that we had before. So that's annoying. Uh, on the other hand, we've got, uh, well, it says bring a newly discovered contract. Uh, capture a new... Yeah, I, I don't know if the one that we've got around Minmus, it, I would love to uh, love to get that one, but I don't think it qualifies for this. But, uh, whoa. Class D asteroid in tow, get your vessel into escape trajectory out of the sun. Huh, you know what? I'm going to take that one. <laughs> that sounds challenging. That's a huge advance. Failure is clearly not an option here. Uh, seven years we've got. Okay, well I'll take that in lieu of my my other uh, my other contract. That seems like quite a challenge, though. Um, yeah, we'll have to see about that. Anyway, let let me not dwell on the contracts right now because my main goal here is to colonize Minmus now. That is what I want to do, and we've got another problem with that. Well, here we are with our carbonite detector around Minmus. Okay, and so it has been presumably scanning for resources all this time. And uh, there's Minmus. It's higher Minmus, but it says that uh, scan sat altitude is ideal. Now, the problem here is that between uh, 0.25 and 0 0.90, uh, the whole colonization system went from being uh, part of the op uh, using the open resource system uh, to now using uh, regolith, which is a totally different system. And Scansat is the same way. Uh, Scansat was adapted to use regolith, uh, at least Scansat version 10. Problem is, uh, I don't see any option for scanning resources here, even if it was regolith. Um, uh, under the oh, that's not right. Settings menu. Um, there should, uh, in previous versions, there should have been a little section here called resource scanning, but there isn't anything like that. So it makes it look like it's not even got that as an option, uh, the whole resource scanning thing. And there isn't anything like map type, there isn't any resource here or anything like that. Uh, so I'm wondering if I can even see resources. Now you can already see that uh, we are not getting the little bumps that we used to. Uh, if you recall, we used to be able to see little positions of resources as the satellite goes around. Let me time warp a little bit to see if those appear, but I'm not seeing that right now. I think that was gotten rid of in this version of uh, Carbonite. And you can also see there's no actual option here. It used to be that there was a show uh, resource overlay or something like that and that option is no longer here so this is my problem I have no idea where the carbonite is and uh, it, it doesn't uh, help uh, checking out our our uh, satellite around the moon was much more replete with with uh, instrumentation so let, let's just take a look at what's going on there Okay, the moon scanner has a lot more instrumentation. It's got magnetometers, it's got altimetry stuff, it's got the works basically, except for ore and substrate and stuff like that, which are expensive. And so when we get a scan of, uh, of the surface, we see a very good, good look at things. But if we switch to the big map, um, we, we still don't see resources of any kind. There's all sorts of options, but there's no option concerning resources. Instrument window says all these things, 
but still nothing to do with resources and small map of course we just turn that off okay so uh, can say moon okay well we've got anomalies and we've got the background look the actual surface image but even though here's our moon scanner right now we're clearly not getting any indication of the resources okay so that pretty much sums up that problem I'll leave that aside for now. The possibility is that we should just launch a new probe with new instruments. So let's take a look at the VAB and see what's going on there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is launch a, quickly launch a carbonite satellite on board the Sparrow. And so I've, uh, it is newly built. I assume that the carbonite detection array might have been fixed, hopefully, uh, so that we can actually detect carbonite. I don't know. Uh, we're going to launch this quickly and get into orbit and see if it works out. And this is the old Sparrow launcher, but we haven't tested this in the new version, so we'll see whether it works better or worse. Okay, so, uh, yep, save and launch. Looks okay. Alright, so regardless of whether the carbonite detection works, I'm going to proceed with my other intentions. And, uh, wow, the terrain does look a little bit bumpy right around here, doesn't it? I wonder what did that. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, so I've got some other vessels that I want to launch at Minmus, and those will help out probably regardless of whether we... Uh, we might need to send a rover to detect the carbonite, we'll see. Um, but probably I have to troubleshoot some of the mods is what's going on. Alright, so here we go. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what added the uh, bumpy terrain here. Clearly, something did. Clouds. Uh, I've been playing in uh, stock 1.0 for a while. I miss my clouds. Let me check my daily re-entry settings. Okay, no alternate stuff. Very important. Okay, we should be clear for fairing separation. Very good. Now start resource scanning, why don't you? Suboptimal, but hey. Okay, that's fine for altitude. Okay, let's see. Small map. What are you doing, little resource scanner? Well, we've got a interesting swath of stuff here. I guess let's go to the big map. Okay, well, that's the moon. No, we don't want the moon. Uh, let's see about Kerbin right now. Nothing in the settings menu still. We've got an interesting slice here. But I don't see any indication of carbonite. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll get this into orbit, and we'll have to see about the. Yeah, I, I've got to check out the mods. There's no way of doing it. I'll leave this in Kerbin Orbit. I'm not, not going to transfer it to Minmus if it's not going to work out. So I'll leave it here for now. Part of the problem that I've got is now everything's updated to 1.0, so I can't really check on the .90 mods, uh, versions of the mods. So that makes it a little bit difficult. I mean, I've got the mods, but uh, I don't have all the details about how they're supposed to work together. You know, ScanSat working together with Carbonite. And how this whole uh, regular thing is supposed to work instead of the open resource system. I, I don't know why they have to... Oh, my fuel lines have been sort of... Well, that shouldn't cause a problem, but my fuel lines seems, seem to have been severed here. So, anyway... Uh, we can decouple stages. Okay, uh, let's have this stage move forward a little bit. Let's switch back to this guy, and we'll bring this back down. Okay. Well, that's smart ASS hold orbit retrograde. 
and we will see what's what. Oh yes, we've still got trajectories in. Trajectories says we are going to land short by a lot. That is interesting. Uh, right, I have to tell it where is trajectories. I have to tell it that I'm uh, going rear end first. Still wonder why it's right click. Okay, so uh, descent profile. We want uh, 180, right? This is not an unreasonable prediction, actually. It's possible that we'll end short like this. Okay, here we go. Daily re-entry already. So we probably will end, end up uh, landing short. But way shorter than initially said. Wow. That's, that's a big difference. So, the new atmosphere with the new... Uh-oh. Oh, oh this is... Oh, something actually blew up? Or not? Um, we'll find out in a sec. I think it's those fuel lines. I think it'll be alright. Um, but yeah, this this far is much different from from the far that we were dealing with in 0.25. We get a lot closer to KSC in 0.25 with this trajectory than we did here. So we're going to have to do a lot more trajectory testing. Uh, so, uh, whoops, what did we lose? Yeah, the fuel ducts. It was just... Okay, well that was just damage. It was actually the fuel lines that were that were not properly connected that had a problem. Okay, well let's see if this thing can at least land. Yeah, the drag on everything is a lot higher now and the terminal velocity is a lot lower than it used to be. Okay, I think we're good for parachute deployment. This is actually quite a nice scene right here. Yeah? Looks pretty flat locally here. Hold on, let me... Soften the blow a bit. Okay, we're upright, sort of, yes? I should have put little uh, Werner thrusters on top just to keep it stable, but it looks stable. Okay, we're a long ways off from the KSC though, recover vessel. Okay, so game crashed, but uh, let me just recover it from here. Alright, so um, yep, we, well we got 80% uh, of our funds back, not great, but anyway, uh, we'll work on the trajectories later. Uh, next up, we've got another thing to launch at Minmus. Uh, this time, though, it, it'll be useful regardless of whether we can detect carbonite because we intend to colonize Minmus as well. Okay, so this is the Minmus Emergency Hab on board uh, Sparrow 9. It doesn't have the inflatable modules like the Moon Emergency Hab did, but it does have a lot of uh, food, water, and oxygen. Uh, so about 354 days for the maximum crew of four. So that's a positive. It can also land itself on Minmus and actually uh, probably take off again. I think I gave it enough juice, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the important thing is it can land. And it can also drill for carbonite and uh, convert that to electric charge so it can replenish itself without using the solar panels in the night time, right? So it can do that. It's got a waste tank. It's got the uh, the pipe endpoints so it can transfer resources uh, so the lot but and of course an LV-909 at the bottom so uh, we're gonna send it over unmanned we're not gonna land it just yet until we find out where carbonite exists and I'll figure out a way to do that and I'll if you guys have suggestions about how to fix the problem I've got that'd be that'd be great uh, keep in mind uh, treat this like a clean 0 0.90 install uh, and if you figured out uh, carbonite in 0 0.90, maybe you can tell me. I've got ScanSat version 10, and in theory I've got the uh, carbonite and everything else working with regolith. So I just need to know what might be wrong at this point in my configuration. Anyway, as you can see, it's launching into Sparrow 9, which means we're relying on FMRS in order to uh, 
uh, recover the base stage. After that, the uh, second stage hopefully will not only be able to get it to orbit, but also boost it on its way to Minmus. Uh, the, the emergency app itself will be able to get itself into orbit around Minmus and then land itself. Okay, so that is the plan. Okay, yep, let's go with this one. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, the Emergency Hab isn't a hitchhiker storage container. It's actually an EL survey station, so it's for extraplanetary launch pads. And so maybe we'll be able to do some extraplanetary launch pad stuff on Mimis as well. Certainly, it'd be a good place to launch a rocket uh, and to build them, if we can find the resources, of course. But, uh, you know, that's, that's now an interesting story. Uh, all right, so uh, SAS on, throttle up, and... Uh, We'll get this ready. All right, let's launch. Now, previously when I launched this, I launched it with the clamp for the asteroid. And you might be wondering about the clamp for the asteroid. I, I think we need to redo that. So that's why I, I'm not transferring it over. Oh, well, I'm not dealing with it right now. So we'll have to send a new clamp for the Class A asteroid, but uh, with our Class C asteroid contract gone, I need to rethink my whole asteroid strategy, basically. But yeah, uh, without the launch, uh, without the claw, this launch is much more stable, as you can see. So it's really the claw making a little bit of a mess last time. Oh darn. I turned FMRS off. Uh oh. Now the system's hung up. Oh, okay, well, maybe it'll work now. But uh, that, I, I bet there's going to be a bug of some kind. Okay, shut down, decouple. Let FMRS get that, okay. Uh, all right, uh, no, I don't want fairings just yet. Let's uh, ignite those engines. Make sure everything is nice and stable. and 35 degrees go 30 degrees and now fairing separation so yeah EL survey station I've got a show UI and it's got all this stuff but I still don't know how to use it should be interesting. Okay, that's satisfactory. And 929 meters per second is just about enough to transfer to Minmus with. Uh, we'll still probably use some of this stage, but that won't be too big a deal. All right, so that's all set. Let's extend its solar panels just for good measure. Oh, not action grouped. Okay, so that should be all set. Let's go back to this stage. Okay, you know what I forgot on the emergency hab though? A carbonite storage tank. So it can drill for carbonite and it can convert carbonite to electric charge, but, but I don't think it can, it can't store carbonite. So that, that was a failure on my part. At least it's got the solar panels. So yep. It's not been my day with the colonization series. Uh, discovering that the whole ScanSat thing wasn't working. I was looking to find a good spot to land this stuff, you see. And finding out that I couldn't see the resources was not not a friendly discovery. When I planned all this stuff out already. I've got other vehicles that I wanted to land there. The emergency head was actually the third vehicle I designed for this episode.
Unfortunately, the first vehicle isn't going to be very useful unless we really do discover a carbonite somewhere. Okay, so landing guidance is what I wanted. Well, landing guidance isn't going to be precise since it's not suited too far, but that's that's a good enough prediction for me. I'm still not practiced enough with this to land it at the launch pad or anything. Okay, and let's get air brakes out. Air brakes, air brakes. And gear down. And let's see if we can control this thing. Uh, hold on. I don't think I have enough Delta V for this. Uh oh, I'm running out of fuel. Okay, that was a weird skid. Probably because this terrain is weirder in the first place. Not too sure what, what generated it. But okay, let's recover this. Okay, well, the stage was nowhere visible. And we are automatically being taken by FMRS to our mission. So, again, even though I land the stages, it doesn't seem like I can recover them. Perhaps the whole Sparrow 9 idea is sort of a bust, since I can't really verify that I can recover the stages. Anyway, here's a mission. Um, yeah, no, no uh, tank for the carbonite. Though, I guess we could hook up something with a carbonite tank using the pipe endpoints. So we could hook up a carbonite tank and maybe it'd work. Okay, anyway, uh, let me quickly arrange for this thing's transfer to Minmus. We've got that uh, asteroid docking port there as well, but yep, and then after that, I will manage one more launch. Oh well, this has a very odd approach to Minmus, but it'll do the trick. So yep, let's just point at node. So next time, uh, aside from getting this stuff at least in orbit around Minmus, what I want to do is talk about how we can wrangle a class D asteroid, not bring it into Kerbin, but shoot it out of the whole uh, system. That's going to be tricky. That takes a lot of Delta V. But they've given us more than a million funds to do it, so that's a plus. Obviously, nukes will have to be involved. I mean, not not weapons, but uh, but uh, Nervas, the uh, LVNs. Okay, here we go for Minmus. Once Grubble Jordan reinforcement stabilizes, there we go. I think maybe the five meters per second left in this stage we best used retrograding a bit. There we go. Well, it's a slim margin Minmus encounter. Yeah, 1,200 kilometers. But that's what we can get out of this stage, so let's ditch it. And that will just be this emergency hab that has to land on its own. Okay, but we'll leave it be for now. And let me do just one more launch. Okay, so now I didn't make a note of who suggested it, but uh, somebody in the comments suggested that what I should do is have the the carbonite mining lander just 
uh, sort of do small hops on the surface to mine for carbonite. And instead of converting it at the carbonite mining station in orbit, just convert it on the surface and then transfer LFO to orbit. And so I've decided that that's a good idea. And so we're just going to, uh, the carbonite miner that we already have, we'll just have to do uh, small hops and then we'll connect it up to a tank of carbonite, a carbonite com uh, tank that also has a converter on it to convert to LFO as well as Mopropan, so it'll have a distiller. And then uh, we have a vehicle to transfer it from, transfer LFO from the surface to orbit. This is just LFO, this is not the mod propellant. And this is what it is. This is the Minmus LFO tanker. Okay, and it has an LVN. So highly efficient in that. Uh, the LVN stage, uh, with it empty, right, this has no fuel here or here, is, has 2,296 meters per second. With all this full, let's just uh, see what that looks like. Uh, but we have to turn off these tanks. Okay, so off, off. Off, off. Okay, with it full, it has 559. Okay, and so in that case, it's, it'll be enough to get into Minmus orbit and then transfer the fuel and then land back down again. One thing I have not put on, though, this obviously needs... Uh, a few more little little things. For instance, we need some some mod propellant. Okay, that should be sufficient. Not great, but sufficient. That's it with it loaded. But that's when it has to dock. It has to dock with everything loaded. The center mass is obviously much lower when it's not loaded, which is good for stability on the surface, of course, when it has to land. Okay, so, and you'll notice that the thrust weight ratio when it's fully loaded is 0.11 for Kerbin, but that would be uh, about 2 for Minmus. Okay, so I think that's all the best part spoken for. And we are using the Maximus 5 because uh, it's the only launcher with uh, wide enough uh, payload fairing. And we do not have the Maximus 5's uh, second stage, it's actually just. Uh, uh, this is just its controllers here, so uh, it'll get to orbit and bring itself back down. But uh, the the what you got the LFO tanker will make its own way over to Minmus. It's got the delta v for that clearly, and uh, land itself when that time comes. But we won't have to land immediately. Okay, so that is all the important bits. Let's have a pilot and an engineer. Denemony and Shelbles. Yeah. That's what I want to send over to Minmus right now. Okay. So let's hope this all works out. Uh, actually, hold on there. I don't think they have enough light support. Oh, they do? No, they don't. I, I don't think they have enough light support. Let me just bring it back in and uh, slap some more light support on there. Okay, so I've given it... Uh, uh, 30, uh, 39 days for two people, 26 days for three. We still got the Nemini and Shelbles in there. And so basically they're going to have to land and occupy the HAB if they want uh, to stay on Mimis for an extended period of time without uh, resupplying. And I guess that's fair enough. Our Delta V has gone down by a little bit thanks to this. But I don't think it'll jeopardize the mission profile. So all is well. And if we could get to back to parts here, I'll just slap the frame back on and we'll launch. Uh, Alright, the game crashed again. And it's been doing that. If I thought that upgrading to 0 0.90 was going to solve that problem, it ain't. But also my funds are going all over the place now. I, uh, there's some weird accounting problem. I, I, I picked up a contract for a million, I know. And that boosted me to 5 million something. But, but yeah, I think there must be something strange that happens when I recover vessels on the launch pad. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get the correct crew back. And we'll try this out, but I'm leaning closer and closer to reverting to 0.25 at this point. If I can't figure out Carbonite and Scansat, I'm not seeing too much of it. We figured out that my aerodynamic problems, at least with the uh, launches of the asteroid docking unit with the with the Sparrow 9 
that was because the claw was glitching and so we know what the cause of that issue was uh, as far as my other aerodynamic problems in 0.25 uh, well they're not as bad as not being able to scan for carbonite so I, I'll have to think about reverting if uh, if I can't figure out the carbonite issue okay well I'm running out of time here so for this launch I'm just gonna launch it into uh, Kerbin Orbit and then bring the Maximus 5 back down or at least try to and we'll use trajectories to uh, well, well, we'll we'll consult trajectories. Let's just say, and I will try to bring it back. But we'll leave this in uh, shovels and anemone in uh, Kerbin orbit, without transferring them to Minmus. I'll have to do that in the next episode. All right, so uh, here we go. Well, any failure in the Maximus 5 stage will be a bad day for Denemony and Shelbles. Their, their LVN on their, on their actual vehicle is not enough to help them out in Kerbin's atmosphere. Okay, so far so good. Maximus 5 working as expected. Remember, this Maximus 5, Maximus X has 9 engines on the bottom, so. Okay, we're through the like a part of the atmosphere, about to have... well actually, if payload fairing release I should wait on just so it doesn't strike the fins there. So we'll hold off until we get to coasting to apoapsis. Lots of extra delta V on this stage, again because it's really way overpowered for the payload, the only reason we're using this rocket is because the payload is so wide. Okay, coasting to Apoapsis, and now payload fairing set. Okay, looking good. Alright. Okay, 102 by 100, not bad. Alright, so, uh, this is a uh, weird separation though. Well, well, I'll show you. Set. And then we also have to separate the fairing base, so we'll do that now. And it'll knock into that probably. Boink. Okay. Oh, darn. Uh, oh, uh, when, when we uh, activate. Okay, let's activate the LVN then. There we go. Alright, so that's all set. Okay. Right, uh, let's turn off its lights. There's no need for its lights to be on. Uh, it only has 50 units of battery. I should have added more battery power to it. Oh well. And more solar panels probably for that matter. At least it has some. But, yep, there are Kerbals in, so it won't be completely out of control. Hopefully. Well, it's got RCS. Okay, so. This stage. Now. In point two five, I didn't think it was a good idea to come in too sharply for, through deadly reentry, but seeing how the sparrow did and how quickly it uh, came down, I don't think I can burn from the opposite side of the planet now. Uh, not with the aerodynamics like this. At least, well, I would have to aim pretty darn high in the atmosphere to come down properly. I'm going to uh, tentatively use Kerbal. I mean, the uh, trajectories to maybe figure this out. We'll see. All right, so let's say I don't. Uh, uh, so normally I do 135 degrees east is my retroburn point. We'll do a little bit more of a sharp retroburn this time. And so we'll take it at uh, 180 degrees, so between uh, east and west. And uh, I'll just say that this is going to be a thing. Uh, our controller is not mounted on the side, so it's either 0 or 180. It's not going to be 90 degrees, so it's right on top there. Well, we're going to be coming down pretty sharply like this. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. 
max g force 10 point and um, 10.8 and fluctuating there Let's have it spot on and we'll see what happens. Okay, there we go. That is spot on. So now we will see what really happens. Now, last time uh, with the sparrow, we ended up uh, starting out with the X over here and it flew it all the way off to this other continent here. So I'm not too hopeful, but. I've got to do testing to adjust my own numbers, so I'm not going to claim that I've got anything better. Well, at least it looks like we'll hit the right continent. But, will we survive deadly re-entry? That's an interesting question. Looks like we're coming in a bit inland from where it originally predicted us. We're further inland than the flag now. We are a bit low. Ooh. Okay, those might have been. Was it. Uh, might have been these little guys. The Elevons. We know those burn off. I was about to say, we are a little bit low. Normally, I wouldn't be below 30 kilometers crossing the shore. So just to recap, for those who thought it might be a good idea to uh, come into KSC a little bit more sharply to make trajectories more more accurate, um, that doesn't work very well. Not, not, no, no. No, that's not a good way for the Maximus 5 to survive. And we know we, I've brought the Maximus down safely and uh, that's only with a uh, smooth uh, trajectory burning from the opposite side of the planet. So, yeah, it looks like I can't use trajectories to get new numbers or anything. I'm going to have to do testing on my own and burn from 135 degrees east as usual. Also, we are landing quite a bit. Quite a bit away from the KSC. Alright, well, parachutes. We probably don't need to use the other bunch. Just these will do. Okay, well, lots of work on re-entry that needs to be done now that uh, Fermier Space and Dead Re-entry have changed between versions. But uh, that's, that's not the most important problem I've got. Obviously, I want to hear any, any ideas you have about Carbonite and ScanSat so I can actually see where Carbonite exists. That is the number one most important thing and might be something that causes me to revert to 0.25 if I can't figure it out. All right. So let's just recover this tiny little bit. Well, at least we've we've lost credits, uh, funds. So that's uh, at least it didn't go up or something. That's that's positive. Anyway, so yes, things have changed, and I need to adapt and figure out what's going on. Uh, at least we've got some stuff that will be on its way to Minmus, so that we can proceed with the colonization of Minmus. And the next episode, hopefully I'll have some answers about Carbonite so that we can go to it with conviction and with a good colony to be established. All right, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.